In the previous video, we showed you how to install all of the virtual machines, and by now you should have three VMs set up on your host machine. To continue with our Pi system installation, we want to start with the Pi server. So first we're going to head to our Pi server virtual machine. All of the installation files that we want should be in the folder that's shared from our host machine that we set up in the previous video. The first install kit that we want to run is the OSISoft prerequisites kit, but this will require that .NET Framework be installed first. To install .NET Framework on Windows Server 2008, we want to use the Server Manager, which is located right next to the Start button. If we go to Add Features, .NET Framework is the one right at the top. So we check that box, and during the installation, we'll keep everything as the default. Once the .NET Framework installation has been completed, we can proceed with the prerequisites kit and the patch. For these installations, we will just be using the default settings. Once we've finished installing the prerequisites, the next step in our installation is to install the SQL database. We will do this by running the install kit for SQL Express. During the installation, we will keep most settings as the default. The important thing to note is when we get to this page where it shows the named instance of our SQL database. We want to make sure we remember this as we will be needing it during the install of our AF server. When the installation for SQL Express finishes, we can go back to our folder and install the AF server. During this install, it will upgrade .NET to version 4.0, which will require a reboot of the system. When the computer has finished rebooting, we can proceed with the installation of the AF server. Once we get to this screen, we can input the name of our SQL database that we saw earlier during the SQL Express install. After AF has finished installing, we'll also run the AF patch, which may also prompt you for the SQL database name. Next in our installation is the installation of the Pi server. The installation will prompt us to find the license file for our Pi server. Once we browse to the correct folder where the license is located, the message at the bottom will display that it has found the license. Next is to connect to our AF server. So in this field, we want to enter the name of our AF server and test the connection. Once we test the connect button, it will show that we've successfully connected to our server. Here we want to make sure that we choose to enable MDB or the module database as it, it will be impossible to re-enable it after the installation. The next step in our installation is to go through the MDB to AF wizard, where we can create a mapping to our Windows domain account. We'll notice that it says we have one missing mapping and that one is required. So we'll go ahead and add this new mapping. Here we'll enter the domain account which we want to be mapped. Once the mapping has been created, we'll notice that it is linked to the Pi Identity Pi Admins so that any time you log into this domain account, whichever machine you're on will have this access to the Pi server. The next step in the wizard is to choose the database under which the MDB will be synchronized. Currently, we do not have any AF databases, so we will need to create a new one. We'll call this database MDB to AF Sync. Once this database has been created, we can complete the installation. Once we've finished installing the Pi server, a quick way we can check the connection is by using system management tools. Our Pi server is li listed on the left-hand side under the servers. Another way to check the connection is to go to File, and then Connections, and then checking the box next to the name of our Pi server. Once we've checked this box, we can see that we're connected as Pi Admin. 
Now that we've finished setting up the Pi Server Virtual Machine, Camille will walk you through the installation of the Interface VM.